ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಆಯೋಜಿಸಿರುವ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ ಜನ್ಮ ಶತಮಾನೋತ್ಸವ ಸಂಭ್ರಮ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ಗೆ ನಿಮಗೆಲ್ಲ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶ ಕಂಡ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಐ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಇಸ್ರೋ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗಳನ್ನ ಮುನ್ನಡೆಸಿದಂತಹ ನಾಯಕ ಅವರ ಜನ್ಮ ಶತಮಾನೋತ್ಸವದ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಅವರ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಕೊಡುಗೆಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಇಬ್ಬರು ವಿಶೇಷ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳು ಅತಿಥಿಗಳು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ ಅವರ ಮಗಳು ಹಾಗೂ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದ ಮುಂಚೂಣಿ ಜೀವಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಾದಂತ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜ್ಯೋತ್ಸ್ನಾ ಧವನ್ ಅವರು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ ಅವರ ಬದುಕು ಹಾಗೂ ಗೆಳೆತನದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಓಸ್ ಹಾಗೂ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಟುಡೇ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವಾರ್ಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಯು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋತ್ಸ್ನಾ ಧವನ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಕರು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದಂತಹ ಪ್ರಯೋಗಾಲಯ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಸಿಯ ಏರೋಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಿಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಸಂಶೋಧಕ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಯಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ನ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಹಾಗೂ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕ ಸ್ವಾಗತವನ್ನ ಬಯಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಕಾಶ್ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಟನರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಬಾಟನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಬಿ ಜಿ ಎಲ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ರಿಚರ್ಡ್ ಫೈನ್ಮನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಜಿಯೋಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಬಿ ಪಿ ರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಏಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ರಿವಿಸಿಟ್ ಯರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅವೇ ದಿ ಲೆಸನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಹ್ಯುಮ್ಯಾನಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸತೀಶ್ ಧವನ್ಸ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಟನರಿ this program will have two lectures followed by a discussion session the first one will be from mr shrinivas kirthi it will be for about 15 minutes then dr josna dhavan will talk about his father for about 30 to 40 minutes then we will have a discussion session people can ask question to both the speakers directly or they can type their questions in the chat box they can ask questions either in kannada or english we request everyone except the speakers to kindly mute your mic and video camera during this session kindly maintain the webinar protocol since this program is being recorded we request you to kindly mute your mic and camera i once again welcome all of you for this webinar commemorating professor satish dhawan ಬರ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಟನರಿ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ನೌ ಮೂವ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಬೈ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಟುಡೇ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ ಅಟ್ ಐ ಎ ಸಿ ಏರೋಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಧವ ದಿವಾನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ರದ ರದಮ್ ನರಸಿಂಹ who was a student of professor satish dhawan he did his b mechanical engineering from nitk suratkal and then msc from moscow university of physics and technology he is basically from mysore his interests are aerospace propulsion systems and halaganada literature i now request mr shrinivas kirthi to deliver his talk thanks akash thank you very much and thanks also to the cpus organizing team uh i'll now share my screen and i hope that this is visible to all of you akash can you confirm that you can see my screen yeah yeah it's visible and my audio is good as well yeah yes sir all right excellent so uh, good evening to all of you now this evening we can take a look at uh what professor satish dhawan's contributions are in Uh, aerodynamics and fluid dynamics now uh, all of you would know that uh, he is an extremely multi dimensional character 
So to look at him from the point of view of a uh, mentor, uh, institution builder has already been documented in several places. And okay. therefore I will restrict my comments and uh, coverage of topics to only those research contributions that he made actively uh, during his time at IASC as a faculty member. And before that, when he was a PhD student at uh, California Institute of Technology, that's Caltech. So, Allali, Kannadali, Sadhivadre, Nana comments Kalna Heltene. So, I will not let, uh, I will not repeat what I've said in English, but I hope it doesn't interrupt uh, the flow of thought. Now, before we understand what his contributions are, we need to get some familiarity with the notions in fluid dynamics. Now, most of you would know, and you're also familiar with fluid flows in general. Say, for example, flow from a tap. Now, when you open a tap, you know that the flow that, that's very close to the faucet, that is to the close to the tap, it'll be very smooth. Something like what is shown on the left-hand side in the figure that I'm pointing to. So here, what is being done is that there is a cylinder, a solid cylinder, which is, uh, and you're viewing it from the top. And there's water flowing all around it. And on top of the water surface, some small uh, quantity of aluminum flakes are uh, spread throughout. And this is a photo of how the aluminum particles move on top of the water surface. You can clearly see how beautifully and smoothly these aluminum flakes have traced out their paths. But on the right hand side, the same cylinder at a slightly different condition say for example at a slightly higher speed for the of water flow you see that the motion of the water is completely changed the character is completely different so you see several vortices and there is a lot of uh, chaotic motion behind it now the earlier state which you saw where the flow is smooth is called laminar flow and this chaotic state is called turbulent flow and what determines the two states is a quantity called a Reynolds number. Now, with, this was discovered in the early 19th century by a scientist called Osborne Reynolds. And he found out that there are several parameters that affect the flow. Like for example, density, velocity of the flow, the diameter of the cylinder, and also the viscosity of the fluid. So this combines all of them into one particular parameter that determines whether a flow is laminar or turbulent. That is one part of characterizing the flow. There's another parameter that's equally important as much as Reynolds number, and that is Mach number. Now, Mach number is the ratio of velocity of a flow to the speed of sound. That is the speed of propagation of a pressure pulse in the fluid. So what does it mean? So whenever we, sp in everyday life, when we speak, uh, sound is transmitted from one place to another. It approximately travels at the speed of 1200 kilometers per hour. So that is 332 meters per second. Now, this is a ratio of how fast the fluid is moving. Uh, sorry, how fast the fluid is moving with respect to the speed of sound. So if this ratio is one, clearly the velocity of the fluid is equal to the speed of sound. So in the left hand side, you see an object that is shaped like a bullet traveling at a speed that is close to 84% of the speed of sound, right? So it is in uh, such flow is called subsonic, where uh, the speed of the flow is uh, less compared to speed of sound. And uh, in the, on the right hand side, you have supersonic flow, where the speed of the flow is greater than the speed of sound. Here that it is 1.7 times the speed of sound. Now, what is important to note is that when the flow is faster than the speed of sound, then you have a unique phenomenon that appears in front of the nose of the bullet called shock wave and this is the reason for that is because the pressure pulse that is transmitted from the bullet is not able to travel faster than the speed of the object itself so all the air that uh, this bullet experiences ahead of it gets uh, trapped within this uh, small cone which is called the shock cone okay or the mark cone so you see that no such shockwave exists in subsonic flow, but it exists only in the supersonic flow. Please keep that in mind, and this will be of some consequence when we move uh, further. 
there's one more uh, notion that you should be familiar with and that is a boundary layer now whenever you move in the presence of a fluid say for example movement in air or movement in water or any other fluid the object that is moving experiences drag drag due to the flu flow of the fluid around it now here what is being shown is a section of an aircraft wing so you are all familiar with how an aircraft looks like suppose i take a section of the wing it looks something like this and if the wing is moving through the fluid with some velocity you can say that there is some relative velocity between the fluid and the surface and the fluid very close to the surface sticks to it and it is this sticky uh, action of the fluid that gives rise to part of the drag that is experienced by that body and just underneath here you can see how the velocity varies from the surface to the edge of the uh, boundary layer so here uh, the, you can clearly see the arrows are um, increasing in magnitude so on the surface the fluid velocity is zero but a little farther from the surface the fluid velocity has some finite value so it is in this layer that all the retardation of the fluid happens due to the movement of the surface and this is called a boundary layer idanna kannadalli elle padara antadu kariyabodu so ee elle padara irodrinda matra nimge ondu vastuvin mele pratirodha pala baruvantaddu so here on the right hand side you see that the boundary layer can also take different uh, character depending on the flow reynolds number which you are already familiar with so it can be either laminar or turbulent but it can also be transitional now transitional is a state where uh, the boundary layer tries to be laminar but it's also turbulent in some in, at other times so you know when you have a loose electrical connection at home and the electric bulb just keeps switching on and off at times so think about it like that so the flow cannot make up its mind what it needs to be okay uh, so in this transitional region the flow is sometimes laminar but also sometimes turbulent and to characterize this has been uh, one of the major uh, works that uh, professor satish savan's uh, uh, student uh, professor radham nasim also contributed to okay now such uh, topics uh, say boundary layer shock wave and other things are generally studied in a device called wind tunnel uh, wind tunnel looks like this idana kannadadalli gaali suranga athwa gaali kolbe anta kuda karitare now uh, this is the wind tunnel that professor satish davan himself uh, helped establish in iisc long back um now this is the entry to the wind tunnel and the this is the exit to the wind tunnel and this is the middle part of the wind tunnel now what is what what is being shown here is that there is a small motor at the exit and connected to the motor is a fan and the fan sucks air and blows out of the exit and due to this uh, at the entry air is sucked in and these uh, uh, fine sieves filter out uh, air and they and they break it down and make it laminar uh, so uh, think of uh, how we use sieves at home right to filter out uh, uh, rough particles from finer particles so these flow straighteners and uh, several meshes and other devices set up in the entry make the flow as quiet as possible as laminar as possible and uh, in the mid section here uh, several objects uh, that you want to study can be placed here for study so here uh, you can if you notice carefully there is a flat plate that is extending from the left to the right side of the wind tunnel so this is the object that is under study in this particular photo okay all right so now that you are familiar with what a wind tunnel is and some uh, laminar and turbulent flow and shock waves we can now take a historic view of what problems motivated the study um, that professor dhavan took when he was a phd student at caltech now go back to 19 early 1950s war has just ended and these are the sort of aircraft that was used that were used in the war and most of them were piston powered and they were fairly powerful the piston engines that is 
but uh, they were not as powerful as the jet engines that were invented but by, by the end of the war that is in the late uh, 1940s and because of the advent of jet engines it was possible to contemplate uh, supersonic transport supersonic airplanes now the airplane that achieved this for the first time is this one bell x1 and it was powered by a rocket and you can clearly see there is nothing that's sucking air in the, all the fuel and oxidizer that is necessary to for flight is already contained in the rocket and uh, chuck yeager at the controls achieved the supersonic flight in 1947 and this was the dawn of the supersonic age so we won't go back to subsonic travel anymore and here is another airplane lockheed uh, f104 starfighter and notice the uh, drastic design changes between a piston powered airplane and a supersonic airplane in addition to how the nose and other features of the aircraft looks like everything is more needle like right it's all much sharper and look at how the position where air is sucked in into the engine so you know that uh, like the photo i had shown earlier of a bullet traveling at supersonic speed an object that like this that travels at a supersonic speed develops a shock wave at the nose but also due to this air intake this region where air gets sucked in there are additional uh, there are additional shock waves that uh, that are developed in the air intake and these shock waves get reflected in the internal walls and that is something that had to be studied so this is therefore the motivation behind uh, professor dhavan's uh, in investigation at caltech here you have again schematic of a wind tunnel and from the left side air is sucked in on the right side air is blown out and you have supersonic flow in the middle and you have a shock wave that develops at the uh, due to the presence of the small needle like uh, protuberance and that's called a wedge right and uh, here you have the shock wave being reflected from the lower side of the bottom side of the tunnel and the interaction between this boundary layer and shock wave was the uh, primary focus of a study and here you see the plot of how pressure varies with the distance uh, on on through a shock wave so earlier the theoretical studies had all concluded that there would be a very sharp jump but due to uh, the uh, dr dhavan's uh, investigations he found out that lamina and turbulent boundary layer uh do support a smooth but although drastic change in pressure now during his time at uh, caltech he also made the first direct skin friction measurements this is uh this is the force that the flow exerts on any surface that is in that it is in contact with so you had already seen how drag comes about by due to the presence of the boundary layer so it is that shearing force that is responsible for that drag and here he invented a new instrument uh, to measure to directly measure the skin friction force on the on a flat plate so this was a major uh, addition to the fluid dynamics literature and it, this is a very clever and ingenious mechanism but we don't have enough time to go through all this and uh, in case uh, you are interested in it please refer to these uh, uh, documents around the same time supersonic travel was also uh, making inroads in india uh, by 1956 uh, there was some thought of designing and developing our own fighter aircraft which is hlh of 24 marut and uh, dr kurt tank was uh, brought uh, came came to india from germany and he was designer of uh, the focke wolf 190 which i have shown earlier in one of the slides and he headed the design team and uh, this all this work that culminated into the first flight in 1961 was studied and developed due to thanks to the research efforts at uh, hl and also at iisc due to dr davan's team so here we take a look at what his contributions were he uh, coming back to iisc set up several new wind tunnels and this is when high speed uh, aerodynamics research really took off here you see a uh, uh, supersonic wind tunnel and also the image of shock waves 
reflected in the supersonic wind tunnel due to the presence of a small wedge. And this is a very small wind tunnel, 5 mm by 5 mm cross section. So this uh, is one of the several wind tunnels that were established. Here is yet another wind tunnel. So a supersonic wind tunnel in construction is a little different from a low speed uh, wind tunnel that is subsonic wind tunnel. And this is a schematic of, of uh, how that uh, uh, facility looks like. And here I've uh, deliberately taken, uh, put here the cost a breakdown of establishing this new wind tunnel. This is fairly interesting. This is not something that generally is communicated by today's scientists. Uh, but this is a fantastic piece of uh, image. Uh, so you can look up, it adds up to 16,626 rupees, which uh, adjusted for inflation would come to roughly 16 lakh rupees today. And that uh, in uh, uh, with the knowledge that Totally, he was given 16 lakhs for establishment of new experimental facilities. It's just 1% of the total cost. So you're getting a fully beautiful uh, state-of-the-art supersonic wind tunnel for 1% of 16 lakh rupees. That's fantastic. And uh, so this is one thing that, uh, that, that stands out uh, in all the documents, uh, from all the documents that he has published. So uh, several other studies were carried out, apart from high-speed aerodynamics. Uh, now, I don't have time to go through what this means, but uh, this is a plot of probability of uh, what the flow is doing in a transitional state. So I had earlier told you that in transitional region, the flow is sometimes turbulent, laminar, but sometimes turbulent. But uh, so the probability of zero means that the flow is not at all turbulent. The probability of one means the flow is completely turbulent. So here, uh, at, your, at that time, when transition was being was was being investigated, there were certain models that uh, 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 that that uh, uh, some of the leading uh, researchers had proposed. One of them was Emmons, and uh, the research work done that IAC uh, made a nice, neat correction to this uh, model to 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 universalize what transition is uh, from laminar to turbulent state. So. Apart from all this, uh, Professor Devon also had a keen abiding interest in uh, bird flight. And I'm led to believe that if a day had 25 hours instead of 24, that extra hour would he would have spent in establishing another uh, facility for bird flight, perhaps. So the joy with which he has communicated about bird flight is evident in the book, How Birds Fly, published by National Book Trust. It initially came out as a long article in Sadhana, which was later published by National Book Trust. And uh, very recently, it has been updated by Professor Jaivan Tarkeri uh, last year. And this is freely available for you to download from Indian Academy of Sciences website. Okay, so here's a summary of what his research contributions were. If someone asks you what Professor Dhawan did, these are the key things that you have to say, and you'll score five marks. Or... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so shock boundary layer interaction, direct measurements of skin friction, uh, several new wind tunnels, at least seven wind tunnels in the span of five years. That's amazing. Right? And at a fractional cost. And several other studies in fundamental fluid dynamics. But from what stands out uh, are the two main themes from all this research. Low cost with ingenuity applied to material skills and instrumentation. And many of these research problems uh, arose from the newly born aircraft industry. So there was one-to-one -one correspondence between what the industry needed and what was being done in addition to fundamental fluid dynamics research. So he can rightfully be called the father of uh, experimental fluid dynamics in India. Now you can read more about this. I've retained only those references which throw light on uh, the science of uh, his uh, life. But there are several more uh, excellent series of articles and videos that throw light on what the man was and uh, as a nation builder and uh, uh, and as a as an excellent human being, so I have not included them here. You can definitely check them out. Thank you. Thank you, Srinivas Kirti, for that wonderful and lucid presentation, which covered the fundamentals of fluid dynamics and contribution of Professor Satish Dhawan to aerospace research. I now request uh, Professor. Venkatesh,
to introduce our next speaker, uh, very distinguished speaker, family of Professor Dhawan, Dr. Josna Dhawan. Professor Venkatesh, sir, please. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Josna Dhawan. Uh, Josna Dhawan is second daughter of uh, Professor Satish Dhawan and Dr. Nalini Nirodi, who was a cytogeneticist. She completed her master's in botany from Delhi University in uh, 1983. Josna Dhawan obtained PhD in cell biology and biochemistry from Boston University in 1991 and pursued postdoctoral work on adult stem cells and gene therapy at Stanford University. Dr. Dhawan joined the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB, in Hyderabad, India, in 1996 where she started a group studying the biology of muscle stem cells and muscle repair. Her research focuses on skeletal muscle regeneration and contribution of we signs or dormancy to adult stem cell function. From 2009 to 2014, Dr. Dhawan helped to establish the Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine in STEM in Bangalore. Currently, Dr. Dhawan is Emeritus Scientist at CCMB. She is a visiting professor in INSTEM from 2004 to date. Dhawan is the current president of India Society for Cell Biology and the Indian Society of Developmental Biologistics. Dhawan was selected as a fellow to the Indian National Science Academy in 2019. She is a member of Raman Research Institute Trust, Bengaluru. Uh, these are some of our uh, accomplishments and recognitions. Now, I request Dr. Josna Dhawan to deliver a lecture about uh, her father, Professor Satish Dhawan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Venkatesh. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to share my screen. Uh, I'm going to try and read uh, a little bit in Kannada, simply because I thought it should be uh, part of this uh, uh, program. I hope I don't mess it up. So bear with me. Ellarigu namaskara. E dinada karyakramadali nimmellarandge bhagavaisudu nalage tumba santosha daika. So thank you so much everybody for being here. I uh, actually I thank the Center for Public Understanding of Science uh, in particular. Uh, Mr. Akash, Dr. Chanesh, and Professor Venkatesh for organizing this program and uh, uh, especially uh, organizing it in remembrance of my father on his birth centenary and for giving me the honor of representing his family. Uh, I'm very happy that Mr. Srinivas Kirti, a PhD student from IIC Aeronautics Department, has given us a talk on Satish's work. Students are the best legacy of a scientist. Uh, I want to say a word to the young students who may be watching. Uh, my father always signed his letters in his first name. So when we were children and then became old enough to leave home, we started calling him Satish. In fact, even his grandchildren call him Satish, which may seem a bit strange in our culture where elders are always referred to uh, by an honorific. But my father believed that respect doesn't lie in such things. Uh, but in one's actions. So I will refer to him as Satish, just as we did during his lifetime. So, um, Satish's work and actions contributed to a variety of individuals and institutions. Uh, but today, what I'm going to do is talk of the people who deeply influenced him and without whom I think his life would have been immeasurably different. So Satish was fortunate to be born to a progressive middle-class family. Uh, his father, David Dayal, hailed from Dera Ismail Khan uh, in pre-independence Punjab. You can see uh, on the map here uh, where it lies. Uh, this is a picture from 1910 of his uh, father, Devadeyal and his brother, father's brother, Purshottam Lal, in Dera Ismail Khan. Um, his, his father, Devadeyal, uh, trained for the bar in Lahore and became a judge. Now, 
mother lakshmi khosla was the daughter of uh, the chief medical officer of kashmir whose name was duni chand khosla and uh, dr duni chand khosla had actually been valued for his service during the serial plague outbreaks of 1905 to 1908 and today when we are in the grips of a pandemic we realize the huge importance of public health providers and our gratitude to them now my grandfather being a judge he was posted all over uh, different parts of pre independence punjab uh, and after the partition he was actually uh, in simla where he was involved in attempting the rehabilitation of the millions of displaced people Satish and his siblings were very close. His older sister Vimla uh, was a talented artist. His younger sisters Primla and Shukla were educators, teachers, and his youngest brother Ranjit, younger to him by 11 years, was a fighter pilot in the IAF. In addition to being a teacher, Primla, his sister, was a committed activist for women's rights and social justice. and she and her husband satish lumba uh, who was a trade union leader were among satish dhawan's closest relationships tragically my uncle satish lumba passed away in 1973 in an aircraft crash but primla lived to the ripe old age of 94 inspiring generations of students activists scholars and ordinary citizens to never stop fighting the good fight Let me talk a little bit about Satish's uh, education in Lahore. Uh, he grew up in Lahore and in Srinagar, where his grandfather lived, and these two places were very comfortable places for a young man who seemed to have boundless enthusiasm and motivation. Set as it was against the backdrop of colonial rule, partition, and the mesmerizing figures of Gandhi and Nehru. So. many people have commented on the unusual list of degrees <clears throat> and i wonder whether they represent satish's search for the right profession i'm showing you here his bsc and msc degrees or ma degrees ba and ma degrees uh you'll see that they were in the second class uh it's worth noting whether a person with such qualifications would be able to progress today have we become too focused on scholastics and not enough on courses that develop ability i wonder so even for independence some far sighted individuals in the government formulated a program for educating young indians in the best centers for technical and scientific education in uk and usa a thousand scholarships were awarded to aspiring young indians who became a part of the generation that built modern india shown here is a picture of these scholarship students in the us in 1946 um sitting on uh right in front uh, on the left hand side of this photograph is indar kapila who was uh, satish's good friend from college days they both traveled together on the same ship to the us uh Indar Kapila worked on the Bhakra design board when he came back to India and was uh, involved in the construction of that uh, marvelous uh, piece of technology. Now, Satish was away at Caltech during partition. Luckily, the Dhawan family was fortunate to survive intact in that tragic upheaval that tore our country apart. But the few days when he had no news of his family. shook him considerably i'm showing you here pictures of his professor hans liefman and his co-student and lifelong collaborator anatol roshko uh and down on the bottom is a picture of anatol roshko with uh, rodam narsimha and satish now anatol hans and satish were three immigrants in the us uh Anatol had of course come from Germany in 1933 and uh, I mean Hans had come from Germany in 1933 but Anatol from the Ukraine 
uh, via Canada. Uh, they formed a very close bond and they were friends for life. Rodam Nasima, Satish's student, also became a part of this close group. Professor Nasima passed away last year at the age of 88, having made enormous contributions to science and education. I show you here the mutual regard of uh, Satish Rodam and their mentor, um, Hans, who wrote uh, very movingly about my father uh, when he passed away. So I, I doubt very much that the young Satish in 1949 had any idea that his name would be clubbed with the greats of Galsit of, of Caltech. Likewise, I doubt very much that Rodam Narsimha, Satish's first student, would ever have imagined that he would be remembered as the polymath who gave us a wide variety of scientific programs ranging from cloud dynamics to indigenous commercial aircraft, from the study of Indian systems of knowledge to being considered as one of the foremost mentors of his generation. Shown here are some pictures of uh, Professor Narsimha as a young student and then later as a young scientist and then right a few a couple of years before, maybe a year before he passed away. Returning to India in 1951, Satish was very fortunate to be selected for a position at the IISC. Uh, the Department of Aeronautics today, of course, is one of the most popular departments at uh, IISC with projects which range from aerospace research to drones that have a variety of practical and scientific applications. And Srinivas Kirti, who is with us today, is an, an example of that vibrant work culture. Uh, Satish threw himself into his work. Uh, he delighted with working from his uh, working with his hands. He found it to be unseparated from the mind because he found that was shared by the master craftsmen of the ISC department, uh, the aero department uh, workshop. Now, the, I've put three names here, uh, Mr. B. Ramaya, Mr. J. Doss, and Mr. B. Naroda, with whom Satish worked very closely in those first years of 1951 to 1957 or so. I, unfortunately, I don't have uh, pictures of uh, Mr. Doss and Mr. Narona, but these are people who helped him uh, build some of the instruments and uh, structures of his work. So, I should tell you that Satish felt that he belonged to Bangalore, uh, even though he came from the far north. And uh, however, he couldn't speak more than a few words of Kannada, and his favorite Kannada word was Garagasa, probably because he loved working in the workshop with the carpenters. So an early activity that grew out of Satish's commitment to egalitarian values was his participation in the World Federation of Scientific Workers. I'm showing you here a picture of the 1956 meeting of the, the World Federation in uh, Beijing. Uh, and uh, the, the picture on the left is of Satish addressing the conference. And the picture behind him is of Joliot Curie, uh, the Nobel uh, laureate uh, of the family of uh, uh, Pierre and Marie Curie. So just as Satish was fortunate in his birth family, Satish was also lucky in love. He met my mother, Nalini Nirodi, right outside the aero department in 1955, and they were married soon after. IISC was much more than a workplace for him. It was the place that gave him the greatest inspiration to work on practical problems. Shown here is a picture of Nehru's visit in 1959. For us, of course, growing up in IISC was a paradise. Uh, I cannot imagine a more uh, free and lively and open, wonderful childhood. Here's a picture of Satish in 1965 uh, behind the statue at IISC. Uh, you'll note that now uh, this, this area behind him in the picture is quite bare, but now there's a thriving forest there planted by successive directors. I'm showing you here uh, a group of friends with whom he met. This is taken 50 years after their first meeting. This group he met almost as soon as he joined ISC in 1951. I think of them as the practical idealists. 
each of them worked very hard at their chosen area, but they never forgot the value of focusing whatever endeavor they made towards benefiting a larger cause, whether it was education or appropriate technology, as in the case of Amulya Reddy, egalitarian ideals, uh, technology for rural development. And Dr. Chanesh and others in the CPUS will be very familiar with many of these people who were part of the creation of uh, KSCST. Here are some more pictures of his uh, lifelong friends. Satish retired from IISC in 1981. Uh, I uh, shown here are pictures of him uh, <laughs> flying paper planes, which he loved to do. I want to talk about another group of close associates who shared with Satish the love of flight and which brought them all into intense contact. Satish's brother, uh, Wing Commander Ranjit Dhawan, was a fighter pilot in the IAF and was awarded uh, the AVSM for his service in the 1971 war. Although life in those, uh, here's another picture of uh, uh, the whole crew of the Squadron 220, the, the Desert Tigers on December 5th in 1971. Uh, this is uh, the, the entire group of fighter pilots uh, who flew the Marut HF-24, which uh, uh, Srinivas has spoken about earlier. Although life was busy in the IISC years, uh, Satish's appointment to ISRO changed many things since it catapulted him into a whirlwind of activity and expectations at a national level, which were set on the back of India's aspirations in space. Vikram Sarabhai's leadership had created a community of scientists and engineers. Shown here are some of the people uh, who paved the way uh, for its success. Now, as you know, the culture of ISRO incorporates a steady and detailed analysis of all failures. You cannot have serial successes unless you learn from failure and acknowledge the deep learning that comes from loss. Uh, these are some of the early projects uh, which, you know, found some continuity. You can see the early beginnings of ISRO. This is ISRO in action in 1983. Here's ISRO today with a new generation of leaders. It's a matter of great pride that there are women who are running some of these very key programs. I think ISRO comes, uh, performs very difficult tasks because it has to deliver while under constant public scrutiny. How many of us do our work constantly being viewed? Uh, and held to uh, accountability by the public. I think this culture comes from a focus on impactful applications. This is some notes uh, from Satish in his own hand on uh, from 1979, underlying the issues of why developing countries have very specific tasks that they need a space program uh, to deliver. There was a deep focus on research, indigenous development, and peaceful applications with an impact on society. So among the things that Satish worried about constantly were matters of conscience. For example, Medha Patkar's selfless struggle to keep the fate of displaced people in our collective consciousness aroused his greatest admiration and perhaps reflected through the lens of his own family's displacement in partition. He was also involved in the Pagwash meetings. Both Satish and Sarabhai were very pragmatic in their understanding of the implications of space science and nuclear energy for military purposes. But I think both were very firmly committed to their peaceful use, which led to their active involvement with the Pagwash conferences, which focused on disarmament. 
Now, one of the other points that Satish uh, was tremendously uh, troubled by was the uh, unjustified accusation of Nambina Ryan. And he wrote strongly uh, in current science uh, to try and uh, keep this injustice uh, in the limelight so that, and I'm very happy to note that very recently, uh, Mr. Nambi Narayan did receive justice. I want to end with a story of four friends in that post-independence era uh, of uh, 1950s and 60s. Um, these friends, I call them Goku, Shivraj, Satish and Raj. You will all know them. Three of these friends had more standard paths, okay? One went from Madras to Bristol to TIFR, one from IISC to Oxford to IISC again, another from Lahore to Caltech to IISC to ISRO, and another one of them wandered the globe in search of adventure in life and science, but came back to Bangalore. So why I'm showing you these pictures is that when you are young, you have no idea what you will become. I doubt very much whether this young Goku who planned the neutrino experiment in the KGF mine shafts ever imagined that when he became Professor MGK Menon, he would be called upon to lead so many institutions of national importance and that he would be remembered as the quintessence of sagacity and visionary leadership. I doubt very much that the young Shivaraj who waited at the college function in Varda to get close enough to the Mahatma to touch him physically as a talisman. He would never have imagined that as Professor Ramaseshan, he would be remembered not only for being a distinguished physicist, collaborator of the great Dorothy Hodgkin, but also for the enormous personal influence that he brought uh, to championing the cause of rigorous scientific publications in India. I'm very sure that the young Rad who built and sailed a trimaran uh, from Ipswich to Sydney. You can think of this as the epitome of adventure. He would never have imagined that he would return to India as Professor Radha Krishnan to head the Raman Research Institute and be remembered as the creator of a unique institutional model. Likewise, I doubt that the young Satish who trained at HAL fixing British war planes in pre-independence India, never imagined that one day we would have a vibrant civilian research, space research program with a center named after him. So when I say these things, should one conclude that there were only great visionaries and doers only in the era just post-independence? I don't think so. I think if there's one thing I've realized after meditating on my father's life, it is this. The generation who built independent India was committed and focused. And I feel that it may have been more committed and focused than my own or the current generation. But this is something of an illusion. Since every generation is likely to value the inheritance of problems, which were seemingly solved by the previous generation. And we devalue the struggles of people around us because they are still in progress. We don't know the end of the stories that we see developing around us. I think today the task is as difficult, if not more so, than the struggle and emergence of independent India, since those with whom we must disagree are not a foreign colonizing power, but ourselves. A colonial government has no moral authority, only aggressive strength. And in the end, they must recognize this and leave. But what about our own ability to ensure dissent and open discussion in our society so that we accommodate divergent views and make it possible for all members of our society to progress, not one at the set of, at the not one set at the cost of others. Satish had a peaceful retirement playing with his grandchildren. In his last research work, in which he claimed no originality, 
Satish focused on bird flight. Using the high speed cameras and the proximity to the migratory birds offered by his frequent visits to Lake Pulikat near Sri Trikota. In the little book that grew out of this work, he thanked ISRO scientists for their help and he thanked the birds for their participation. In his life, Satish studied elements of flight and left a legacy that went beyond aeronautical research and space applications. My father passed away in 2002. He belonged to a generation that left a legacy of science and engineering in the service of humanity. I think this generation too can look beyond narrow ideals to the universal. I want to end with a few reflections of my own world. I'm a cell biologist. Living cells make up a collective, which is a functioning organism. To perform any task worthwhile, a collective effort is needed. And sometimes those tasks are not in agreement and require negotiation. Seen from home, our world is a beautiful place even if it is not always so on the ground for many of our sisters and brothers. So I want to end with a universal image of human achievement, which is only possible by invoking the collective, something that reminds us that we are not just individuals or men and women or Indians, but human. This picture is the pale blue dot taken by Voyager in 1990, when this wonderful little spacecraft, which was engineered by NASA JPL, was leaving the solar system 13 years after it was launched. Carl Sagan persuaded NASA to ask Voyager, which had been sending us images of the universe ahead of it, to turn around and take a picture of our home. The backward glance of the iconic pale blue dot image shows us simultaneously our infinitesimally small place in the universe. And at the same time, the fact that our species is the only one that can conjure the means to take an unimaginable outward journey and also look back at ourselves. The quote here from Pastor Ralf Sockman the larger the island of knowledge, the longer the shoreline of wonder. It encapsulates the fundamental joy of exploring our universe. Voyager is still sending back data 42 years after it was sent out to explore the unknown. We have a universe of possibility before us. Thank you all for participating in this remembrance of my dear father. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for that wonderful, very touching, personal and moving depiction. I think uh, we have a very distinguished gathering today, uh, close to 60 people. Uh, there will be a lot of questions. And uh, before that, I would like to formally welcome uh, Ms. Amrita Dhawan, who is also there today, who is the daughter of Satish Dhawan. Uh, welcome, ma'am. And uh, one more person, distinguished person, Dr. C.R. Satya, uh, who has worked in SLV3 project along with Dr. Kalam, uh, Dr. Dhawan, and, and later he moved to Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Uh, he is also available with us today. He also has written an article in Kannada uh, for the Vigdana Loka magazine uh, coming from KSTA. So, Dr. Satya, sir, we welcome you. And now the floor is open for the uh, discussion. Uh, people can unmute themselves and uh, ask questions. Uh, or they can type the questions in the chat box. Madam Subalakshmi is telling 
ಅಂತಹ ಅದ್ಭುತ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಗೆ ತಕ್ಕ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಪರಂಪರೆ ನಿಜಕ್ಕೂ ಸಂತಸದ ವಿಷಯ ಸೊಗಸಾದ ಸರಳವಾದ ನಿರೂಪಣೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸನ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಜೋತ್ಸ್ನಾ ಅವರೇ ಬಹಳ ಸುಂದರ ಅವಲೋಕನ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಓವರ್ ವ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಕಾಶ್ ಕೆನ್ ಐ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಎ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಯಾ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಗೋ ಹೆಡ್ ಶ್ರೀನಾಥ್ uh good evening dr josna it was really fantastic lecture uh, my question is to you only i appreciate uh, shrinivas talk also uh, uh, i have a two question question number 1 we hear uh, in our isro that uh, davan is to take or borrow or accept salary of 2 rupees or 1 rupee which is a symbolic thing yeah i know that uh, maybe you maybe being a child or you may not be aware but uh, still if you are working like that what would be the i mean like in in house discussion and that kind of a thing of course he is a well paid iacs or other resources but that's one question general question second technical question is uh, so when it comes to isro uh, i mean whatever uh, may be the uh, uh, growth but uh, in in terms of fire machines fire fire flying machines we have progressed when it comes to the wind uh, flying machines we have to look towards hl or nl they are also doing considerably why uh, i mean davan did not see or i don't i don't want to ask that way question uh, what kind of a thoughts might have happened uh, like we didn't progress much inside isro uh, more than a rocket like on the flying machines that's my question so i'll take your first question first Uh, i'll tell you my father never discussed money with us at all in fact i feel that he didn't prepare us to understand how to negotiate the the world ahead of us when we were young because he he was uh, he used to come he used to bring his salary and give it to my mother and my mother would give him pocket money okay so he he didn't handle any of the money in the house so the fact that he took one rupee salary you know very well that the reason is that he he wanted to be yeah. able to say what he thought and to step down if needed right because uh, being yes. in the hot seat in in isro i think is uh, uh, different from being an academic in iisc so he preferred to keep his academic affiliation yeah. and do work as hard yeah. as ever for isro but not take a salary so yeah, yeah. that that was his thought process your your second question uh, i'm not sure i'm the right person to answer it uh, i can speculate that you know probably in the early years the biggest um, uh, sort of priorities were to make sure that technology worked and i'm i mean you know better than me that there were lots and lots of committees which were set up where there were not just committees actual good collaborative interaction between uh hal isro nal isc so many pro- programs and projects and people who were shared between them now why that didn't lead to a greater development of uh, flight as opposed to space travel or uh, you know space applications um, that i beyond my uh, okay thank you thank you thank okay. you for this thank yeah. you for those questions it's it something to think about yeah. and mr tv balasubramanya has a question here uh, many are of the view that isro bark and few other organization are mere islands in a sea of mediocrity did mr davan have a view on this so i think that uh, satish's view was that uh he he didn't make judgments about mediocrity versus excellence etc i think his main focus was we've got to get a job done there are many ways to do it and we have to roll up our sleeves and get working and you know you have to start from somewhere so i uh he had a great belief in indian talent i'll tell you that he was not uh, uh in any way did he think that uh, there was not the sufficient potential in our country for doing anything we put our uh, minds to but you will all understand that you know each of these organizations is a complex beast right they all have to negotiate complex spaces between uh, uh, what they actually do what gets uh, approved how how directions are set so 
Uh, while I think it is important for us to all hold people accountable and ourselves accountable, uh, I think maybe we also have to be a bit more forgiving in our judgments. Uh, so that's my personal opinion. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, Bal Subramaniam, maybe I didn't answer your question. Uh, good evening, Akash. Good evening, sir. Uh, I think we'll take a question from uh, Himanshu first, then uh, Vasanti. Go ahead, uh, Himanshu. I think there was some issue. Uh, please go ahead, Vasanti, ma'am. Sir, good evening, sir. Yeah, please ask your question, ma'am. Sir, actually, I don't have any question, but I have something to say. Uh, always, uh, I love teachers very much, especially the teachers uh, who mold their because the students is a great tribute and uh, that is the great achievement of the teacher what i believe and uh, seeing jyotika madam today really i came to know how an uh, scientist's family would be really very happy to see you and listen to you and also satish sir my beloved scientist he is though i am a science student i am working as a district child protection officer uh, always uh, I, I read the scientific uh, uh, scient scientific books and fictions and also I read a lot about uh, Dr. Uh, APJ Abdul Kalam. That's how I love Satish sir. Thank you very much for uh, uh, allowing me to speak here and be a part of this uh, program today. Thank you very much ma'am and Akash sir. Thank you Vasanthi ma'am. Uh, Good evening sir. We have a... Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank Vasanti for that very nice uh, statement. Uh, it's amazing that uh, the you're doing wonderful work as a child protection officer, and yet you're keeping on top of scientific uh, reading. Uh, kudos to you. Congratulations. Good, e good evening, madam. My question is for uh, Josna, madam. Hello. Can you go ahead and answer, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam, as a father, Nimma father, Bala Chanagi, Bala Ella explained Madari, Aurinda, Nama Aerospace Technology Improvagade, you are to space and now Mundu Sindre, Auru, main current Kartru, Auni Chicken Ridaga, Akandre, Auru E. Technology Ali Bala interested, Nim Yenda Dru, Idane profession, the country Madi and Trena Dru, motivate Madira, Oduag. Did he, did he motivate me to follow in his footsteps? Yes, 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 yes. Whether he yes. forces you to take any of this kind of no, profession? No, not at all. Actually, we all uh, were just encouraged to do whatever interested us. Uh, okay. Of course, when we were in school, we were expected to study, but okay. it was not, uh, there was no forcing or you have to get up and do, go for tuition or uh, any of that. There was uh, general encouragement and uh, he, but he was interested that whatever you wanted to do you should throw yourself into it and do it well it no, by seeing matter. your father's work nimige enadru interest bandita anta nimma father kelsa maartta idralla adar bage nimige enadru nanu adar bage yochane maadbeku anta enadru bandita manasalli illa because i didn't have the brains to study physics and mathematics okay, okay? and i was more interested in the natural world uh, okay. So I studied botany and uh, then went into, uh, uh, you know, studying uh, stem cells. So okay. uh, ne never thought of going into uh, physics or aeronautics myself. Yeah. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Namaskara. Thank you so much. C.S. Arvind of uh, Bhavana, he has commented wonderful and succinct talks by Srinivas and Josna. He is congratulating both of you. Even uh, Pramod Turvihal and Mrs. Subbalakshmi, they are con congratulating both of you. Uh, namaste, uh, Josna madam. Uh, namaste. Nan Dilip Dilip Dharmapanta, Isro I am a scientist at Isro. Uh, okay. Madam, one question, uh, Nimge. Uh, what were the dreams about our country's development uh, which your father had? Andre Nim Tande Yadaru share Martidra, um Yaudadru and the Yautara dream share Martidru Nam Deshad Bhagi. So it's uh, thank you for that question, uh, Dr. Dilip. Um, 
it's hard to say because you know uh, i'll tell you my father was not shy about talking <laughs> he would talk a lot all the time <laughs> so we heard lots and lots of plans and things like that but uh, if i can uh, summarize you know i think his biggest dream was that people should feel uh, uh, how's the best way to put it he he didn't have specific dreams that we should achieve x by you know y date he wanted because you can imagine the problems that face our country then and which still face our country now we still have a long way to go right we may have made progress on many fronts but we have a long way to go and i think his uh, greatest dream was to for people to be self determining and for them to be independent uh uh and that for that to spread across much larger sections of our society than it is so um i i really believe that that's what he wanted you know that's what that's what drove thank him you. yeah <laughs> thank you dilip for asking that question um mrs lata parth sarthi has written dear jyotna madam a great salute to the inspiring and humble talk by you it was indeed a great pleasure listening to the proud legacy created by professor dawan thank you and one more uh, comment by dr vijay kumar hegeri he says thank you cps and dr chanesh for this meaningful memorable remembrance of the greatest aerospace scientists of india professor satish dawan thank you madam for your excellent narration about your father matte yav prashne bandilla bere i have a one personal question ma'am uh, it is about uh, mrs satish dawan madam nalini nirodi she being a doctoral student uh, having a doctoral degree from usa at that time uh, i feel uh, her contribution is immense towards uh, professor satish dawan's success so how was it for uh, um, nalini ma'am to cope up with this uh, having a degree uh, having a higher education herself yeah thank you for asking that question because you know uh, i think as uh, as more and more women come into uh, their own uh, where there are more avenues for women to pursue uh, what they would want to do and be self determining uh, one forgets that often the pressures of family and society uh, still keep uh, even a person who had a, an advanced degree like my mother found it difficult to continue you know after her marriage so she actually uh, uh, had a post doctoral uh, position after her marriage but she found it too difficult to manage family and uh, uh, work so so she did uh, stop formally working and i often you know she she made the choice and she had a very happy life there's no doubt about it. i often i often wonder whether she did not uh um uh, it's not so much regret but she missed missed the work uh, at in the lab and uh because she enjoyed her work very much and you know she taught us a lot i mean most of the reason why i am a biologist is because of my mother uh so um it's you know from even in a loving family the constraints can be very strong and they can change the direction of a person's life right so as i said i don't think she ever regretted it but she did miss it maybe in your success uh, we may find uh... Mm, dr nalini nirodi success akash i have a small suggestion yeah go ahead china if time permits sir if madam agrees uh, can we also have a, a see and listen to amruta dhawan it is an opportunity to see jyotsna we were uh, happy and uh, also to just listen to her a minute this only my yeah, person interested madam uh, she can unmute herself and just say a few words so i'm not sure my sister is able to do that and uh 
I, I'll try and text her to see if she's having difficulties. Uh, okay. Mama, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you have spoken about his professional life. Can you tell us how he was as a father? <laughs> he was great fun as a father. I can tell you that. So he looked very serious in the office, right? And he always looked, even when he was smiling at his work, you, he had an air of seriousness about him, but he was not serious at home. He used to make lots of jokes. So we used to tease him a lot because, you know, we grew up in the South and we considered ourselves South Indian because my mother was from the South, right? So we would always make jokes about him being Punjabi. So this is the, this, this is the great benefit of coming from <laughs> a marriage where people had such different cultures, right? You could always make fun of the other. So he was, he was a lot of fun. He, he would make uh, uh, a lot of jokes. He, he read uh, a lot of books, both fiction as well as, uh, uh, you know, work. And he encouraged us to read. Um, he, he liked painting and uh, drawing. And in fact, when we were very little, he made us lots of board games, uh, which we, we still have. I should share those sometime. Uh, but uh, he, he would have painting sessions for us when we were very small, uh, when he was, you know, still only at IISC and being an academic, he had not yet uh, become director. He was, uh, he would have a bit more free time. So on Sundays, we would have painting sessions. He would set up little tables for all of us to, to paint. And everybody was supposed to do their own stuff. You were not supposed to have too much <laughs> chit chat. So all of us would paint. Uh, and uh, my mother included. So, uh, you know, just drawing things, having fun. Um, he liked he liked being outdoors. So we would go for walks with him. You know, in those days from IISC all the way to Hebal uh, Lake uh, was just fields. There was no new BEL road, no Central Power Research Institute, nothing. No Hebal flyover where you get stuck for hours today. So we could actually either drive there or sometimes we even went by cycle. So it was a different world. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Varshita. Uh, there are no other questions. I have one more question, ma'am. Sure. I came to know that he read a lot of biographies. Yes. Uh, when, when are we expecting his own biography? Well, uh, I know both ISRO and IISC, uh, Professor Narsima had actually contacted a few people, uh, uh, historians of science, uh, to do this. But uh, I hope it happens sometime. But, um, you know, I think he himself would not be bothered if there was no biography of him, because he didn't believe in a cult, uh, you know, creating a cult. So uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, you do your work, you leave your legacy, you have students like Srinivas uh, coming up as his grand, grand, grand student. And, uh, you know, that, that should be enough, right? <laughs> but still, it will be wonderful to have his life. Yeah. It's a worth revisiting and recollecting. It's true. But somebody, somebody who can do it dispassionately uh, and look at his life uh, from a different angle needs to do it. So... I hope it happens. Madam, that is required to build uh, self-determined and uh, independent India. I, I yeah, have a question. Have Can I ask? ask? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, Arvinda uh, wants to talk. Uh, Arvinda, Arvinda. Yes, here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question to Jyotsna. Actually. Um, since your father really, you know, done so many responsibilities, I'm sure it was not without any kind of stress in some sense. Um, because, you know, views are usually sometimes you know debated opposed and sort of things that you want to do you know there are always hurdles obstacles and so on um and i, I am also facing some of them <laughs> <laughs> and usually the stress gets to me and also sometimes i discuss with my wife and um, you know it's it's in in, in 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 some sense she's a part of my stress <laughs> this thing of and i often wonder whether that should happen or not uh, you know but nevertheless i mean she's a part of my life and she's a great help to me i mean i i want to record her this thing in this area 
And so how did your father, uh, I mean, if at all there were any stress, how did he handle uh, stress? Because I think in work, especially when you're donning some responsibilities, it's, you know, for progress, sometimes you really feel that there are these obstacles you can't get over. Yeah. <laughs> did he have any such face, any such moments and how did he handle it? No, he did, I'm sure. Uh, but I'll, what I'll tell you is that, uh, you know, I think until we were in our teenage years, I was not at all aware of uh, the kinds of stress that he was under mm. and he was under tremendous stress especially from 72 onwards because in 1972 he was uh, just after uh, taking over at ISRO he was also handed the Avro commission mm -hmm. which was a, a huge task because yeah. it involved so many investigations and it was a difficult thing and the ISC was going through many changes there were many exactly. needs at ISC you know, okay. the world was changing. Uh, but I tell you, we had very little idea of the kind of stress that he went through because he made a, so okay. he, he used to say that when he went to the office, the curtain fell and he would just <laughs> completely shut out anything that was happening at home. And similarly, he tried to, when he came home, he tried to keep his uh, professional, uh, you know, uh, problems and concerns away in the office. Of course, he stayed up late, you know, signing papers. And I remember, especially in ISC, in uh, mm -hmm. there used to be a, a, a wonderful uh, gentleman called Mr. Naraini, who used to work as the in the head office. He used to come cycling with a huge dabba <laughs> full of papers, which had to be signed in the middle of the night, and uh, mm -hmm. Satish would sit there signing them. But, you know, in terms of stress, he he kept it pretty much to himself. Obviously, he talked to my mother about it a lot. And my mother was ah, very well to aware ask of it. Mother, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but I'll tell you, I mean, when he went abroad or if he went anywhere and we wanted something specific, I mean, on his uh, occasional trips uh, abroad, we always wanted, especially as teenagers, we wanted some music which was not available in India. See, these are the pre-internet days when everything came on those NP right right so and especially if you wanted rock and roll you had to get it from there so mm -hmm. he used to ask him to get rock and roll records for us okay <laughs> I see. so some poor soul would be sent off to buy these records <laughs> so far i think we created more stress for him <laughs> we, we helped him with any of it okay even you have mentioned uh, your mother used to tell him to bring the plants also from the different places definitely wherever he went she he, he was he had a permanent list in his bag of the plants that were required <laughs> thank you jyotsna actually it was useful because you know uh, sort of the stress level for me personally i mean uh, profession whenever abroad sort of on sabbatical and so on is much less than it is in india <laughs> so, so i was kind of you know trying to you know kind of um, see how he would have done it yes yeah i'm sure he would have kind of uh, discussed a bit with, with your mother a lot yeah with my mother my mother was aware of all of the things that he was going through and sometimes at the dinner table you know some particular issue if we were listening uh you know uh something would be discussed but uh i you know he 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 managed his stress pretty well, well okay. uh, yeah Thank, Thank you, you <laughs> Professor Arvinda, for joining and asking these questions. Uh, Mrs. Srinath Thank says, you. very splendid speaker, Dr. Jotsna. Namaskarams, great leader Satish, an equivalent researcher, Dr. Jotsna. Our pleasure listening to you. Thank you, CPS. Uh, thanks, Srinath. Uh, I think this is the baggage of questions. I have one quick question. Yeah, so go ahead, please. Uh, Professor Dhawan seems to love, really, truly from his heart, the notion of light, uh, whether it's applied to birds or uh, uh, metal birds. So, did he entertain any notion of getting a pilot's license at any time? He did. He had one. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Absolutely. So, when he was a, a, a young man, uh, and uh, of course, it was impossible to learn how to fly uh, unless you were part of NCC or something like that. And those programs were not there when he was uh, in college. So as soon as he got to the US and he had a little, uh, you know, um, um, spare time and, uh, you know, managed to scrimp and save some money, 
he did take uh, flying lessons and he got his uh, pilot license. Uh, in fact, I was just looking for it the other day because I thought it's uh, something that I should keep and I couldn't find it, but I, I'll, I'll unearth it somewhere. But at the time, you know, his brother, who was 11 years younger than him, uh, was uh, uh, determined to join the Air Force straight after school. Uh, and my grandfather persuaded him, you know, to go to college and at least get a BA before he went to the IAF. The minute, the very day he finished his degree, he went and enrolled in the IAF. And in the meantime, my father had saved up money to bring him to California to get a pilot's license because he knew how crazy my uncle was about flight. Uh, but by then, he had already joined the IAF. So, he, he got his dream. Yeah. <laughs> so did he make use of the license later on as a no sorry, no he didn't not in india he didn't fly okay. uh, in india um, what he did do though was to ensure that uh, the isc aero department got a, uh, a small plane and that the 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 uh, the airfield was set up and you know dr damania who was at uh, yeah. the aero department was a, a wonderful pilot yeah because he always found it strange that, uh, you know, here's an aero department and we don't have a, uh, an airplane. You know, we can't just be studying uh, uh, boundary layers and uh, turbulence. We have to get up there and look at the earth from, you know, an experienced flight. So he was, yes, he was absolutely crazy about uh, flight. Uh, Interesting. So I read question. somewhere that the Pushpak aircraft in front of the department used to be uh, used for... Uh, uh, pilots lesson, uh, lessons for students back in the day, but it's uh, that's not the case now. Uh, no, it's interesting. Not anymore. <laughs> it's too bad. You you guys should yeah. uh, agitate and get a yeah. get a plane. After all, if you can uh, you know fly drones all over the place, why don't you? Uh, it, right. it, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can get the equivalent of sixteen lakhs today <laughs> to get yourself a plane. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am, and. Kirti, uh, we are coming I to the end. To, I also want to say something in the sense that just a personal comment, uh, Akash. Uh, I, actually, I, was, I, I think I was one of the fortunate few who actually did uh, see Professor Dhawan, actually. Um, yeah, in uh, I think in 1979 or 80, when Abdul Salam got the Nobel Prize, um, he came to you know visit South. In fact, he visited the proton decay experiment at KGF. And he gave a talk at the IASC, which was you know, chaired by Professor Dhawan. And uh, as a student, I was, I think, during my PUC, I think, in National College, plus one goodie. And uh, seeing this charming man was very inspirational. <laughs> and uh, I still remember his comment. I think I mentioned it to just now over email that at the end of the talk, um, you know, I wanted to get uh, Abdul Salam's autograph. So went close to him and he said, no, once it starts, it never finishes. <laughs> and then the whole, because I think it's also because the hall was full of people, and the, you know, the, yeah. the main picture hall in IASC. Yeah. And Professor Devan was uh, sort of, you know, uh, eager to get out of this room. And he said, once it gets full, it gets stuffed here. <laughs> and you know, he just went <laughs> up. <laughs> Stuffy here, he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, was, I mean, I, I, I have a very clear picture of him, uh, you know, and it goes well with all the personality. I mean, his personality that uh, Jyotsna and all of us have, uh, you know, heard about. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Arvinda, Thank for you. sharing the personal experience. Uh, I would like I have a uh, comment. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Srinivas uh, uh, for giving uh, such a uh, exceptional uh, introduction to aerodynamics in just 15-20 uh, minutes and uh, it was very motivational. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have last five minutes. Uh, anybody has questions? No, I'll also just say thank you, Srinivas. It was very beautiful. I, I heard your talk and it was succinct and you had pictures and you really said the right things. And uh, I know you have also written in Canada. And I really, you know, kudos to you very first. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I have a question for Srinivas. Please go ahead. So Srinivas, yeah. what are you studying and how soon will you be done? Okay. So it's a problem in transition. 
Okay. Uh, so the question of addressing why laminar flow becomes turbulent can be looked at in several other ways other than how it's presented in the slides. So okay. it requires some mathematics and it have we look at uh, how to model the flow and how disturbances tend to get amplified and become uh, gives rise to turbulence. So that is the nature of the work that I'm doing. So it's close to finishing up and I hope to submit my thesis by design by this year end. Oh, very good. So what yeah. are the plans for the future? Ah, okay. In that sense, uh, well, um, one thing is, uh, I, in, in my opinion, uh, there are several problems that need to be addressed, uh, not necessarily from a scientist perspective, but also from a product development perspective. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, having a personal airplane company is one thing. Uh, but I know it's cost intensive, so I'm trying out some ways where uh, electric airplanes can be brought about for personal recreational flight. That's oh, hence the, exciting. The, that's yeah. The, let's hope uh, it materializes. Uh, but I, I think the the future of flight is in electric airplanes uh, for personal flight at least. Yes. So um, and uh, there are enough aerodromes scattered around the country. And I actually have a drawing that Dhawan himself had uh, uh, sketched out on on pencil. So I've, I've been looking at it. Uh, so let's see. Lovely. Um, Would you share the drawing? Yeah, I'll send it over. Send it by email to me. I'd love yeah. to see it. Yeah. yeah. So he has been, uh, he, in, it's in the context of analyzing how routes can be planned out to connect out India. But uh -huh. those are long haul routes. But I'm thinking yes. for personal recreational flight, uh, within of the order of 300, 400 kilometers. Let's see. That that so, sounds very exciting. Electric batteries are shrinking in uh, their size yes. and volume. Energy yes. density is going up. It's possible uh, to make it cost effective. You maybe if people are interested and if there are sufficient training institutes, uh, there can be flying licenses and uh, yeah. people can own airplanes. Yeah. Let's so see. you know, one of my father's great friends when he was at Caltech was uh, Paul McCready. Uh, okay. So Paul McCready, for others uh, uh, in the program, was a marvelous inventor who figured out the a way for actually human-powered flight. So uh, under the wing was suspended the the uh, a bicycle, uh, which the the pilot would essentially pedal to create sufficient energy for lift. And uh, Paul McCready's sons have a company, I mean, McCready found a company and after he died, his, his sons have continued that. And they're doing absolutely amazing things with uh, different ways of uh, looking at flight. So uh, I look forward to seeing uh, Srinivas's uh, new inventions and uh, maybe we'll all be able to. So you, you think you can get there before I'm 80? I don't know if they'll let uh, uh, an 80 year old uh, <laughs> fly on electric airplane so get there quickly so that i can fly <laughs> i'm sure Srinivas will work towards it Srinivas, there is one more question for you from subbalakshmi Srinivas, sir halaganda the bagge nimma asaktiya bagge eradu maat helidre thumba santosha halaganda okay uh uh or hisre nandri subbalakshmi subbalakshmi namaskara subbalakshmi ore uh nanage halaganda parchaya sikkiddu uh Hanerne Targatili, Hanerdeno, Hanone Targatili. Atne Targati Lukuda, Halakana the particle itu, Rehechagi Gamna Kutililla. Ranana Gadhayuda Bima Mate Duryodana Kadana Idella Kula Kularkunum, Markanum, Astamedidar Adu Ulkontu Ali Surya Arka Padwana Dali Mulutane. Ade Samyadali Duryodana Kuda, Kula Kurukularka, Kurukula da Arka, Alla Kurukula da Surya, Aunukuda, Alla Astangatanakne, Adu Vira Rasali Mud Bertala, Dunange Ulkon Bertu, Ranana Gadayuta, Sangraha Alinda Solpa Matege, Nanakeli Estagate, Estomatic Swajaya Martiranta Daste. Professor Venkatachala Shastri or Halaganada Vyakarana on the 
ಕುರ್ತಾಗಿ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳು ಬರ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾನಾಗಿದ್ದೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರುವಂತದಷ್ಟೆ ಆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇದು ಇದು ಯಾವುದು ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ ಅಂತ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಂತ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಆತ್ಮತೃಪ್ತಿಗಾಗಿ ಅಷ್ಟೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ದ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ರೋ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಧವನ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಸ್ ಅವೇ ವಿತ್ ಬ್ಯೂರೋಕ್ರೆಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಸ್ರೋ ಅಂಡರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲಿ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋಸ್ನಾ ಧವನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಫಾದರ್ಸ್ ಇಲಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಅವರು ಬರೆದಿದ್ದಾರೆ and this is varshita is telling thank you for the webinar absolutely inspiring for generations to come and kusuma salian avaru good evening ma'am thanks to cps and uh, for in- great inspirational speak about dr satish dhawan by dr dr josna ma'am thank you anta helta idare madam one thing uh, uh, after his retirement Uh, about isro and about isro's uh, growth uh, what he was feeling or what is his uh, uh, dream what was his dream like uh, after his retirement how, how it should be isro like that so i'll tell you one thing both at iisc and at isro uh, my father believed that while he was there he has to put 100% of himself into that place but after he retires he has to let people who are there doing the job do the job uh so you know uh to put his views unless they were asked directly to him he was not in favor of telling anybody what to do unless somebody comes to him for advice so uh he Uh, obviously he was very proud of both iisc and isro for how they continued to grow and gave full credit to the people who were there uh the the leaders the students who were taking forward not just his vision but their own vision so that you know you'll notice that uh, you won't find a lot of things written by my father either articles or anything on any specific topic uh when he was asked to give a talk he would give a talk but he would not write down uh you know great opinions uh on any specific thing because uh, i think he preferred to keep those you know <laughs> uh as yeah, as uh, you know a, a, an open question for the people who are actually involved to take forward one of his rare interview has appeared in the book brought out by isro the from fishing hamlet to red planet that's right yeah so that is the thing and rri repository have some of his talks yes uh, soft copies of his talks so yeah. except that uh, very little will get about his writing yeah i think uh, yes we had a fair number of questions and uh, a good uh, discussion session now it's time to uh, wind up the session I now request Dr. Chanesh to summarize uh, with his concluding remarks and propose a vote of thanks. Uh, over to you, Dr. Chanesh. I, I think I have nothing much to summarize because both the speakers have explained uh, very neatly and uh, to the, to, uh, they have reached the heart of uh, the people who have heard them so far. And um, personally, Uh, i belong to a kind of his legacy in the sense his own close friend professor amulya reddy who initiated karnataka state council for science and technology with which i was associated with a decade and a half so in fact uh, the traces of their culture their interest has uh, you know is, is 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 helping us in moving cps also in that sense we are taking it and uh, i am very happy that uh, srinivas kirti has introduced uh, the kind of work uh, that professor davan has contributed to the country and the science in this very happy and i hope people have really taken what professor davan has done to the country as well as the science so i am very very grateful to srinivas kirti and he is also interested in kannada 
which is my heart also. So in that way, uh, uh, we may have some time to speak together later in that sense. I'm very happy uh, from readers and my uh, CPS followers. I would like to thank uh, Srinivas Kirti for his wonderful insights of uh, Professor Dhawan. Because aerodynamics, uh, see people, aerodynamics as a word is very popular. Aerodynamic car band mele, eldrigo aerodynamic and then on the one tra, something that is. So what is that really is? That was uh, you know gap for many people. And in fact, long ago we initiated this program, this kind of words like aerodynamics, missing link. Even uh, are common words people know about it, but what is the reality of science is is, 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 is a matter to be discoursed. Unfortunately, those things have never happened, and we are at it. So uh, Sima Skirti has done a wonderful job with us in stating what exactly aerodynamic means and how people can take it. Thank you, Sinvas, and uh, very happy from CPS as well from the, our, our community. That because we, though we are three, but our community is much larger. They are spread across the state, and I'm very happy. And uh, thank you very much, Sinvas. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, uh, guy, the, really the marvelous thing what we uh, our people were watching to know at least one. The, the many have written to me so far in the last 15 days. We are uh, reaching people that Professor Josna is uh, talking in CPS, uh, daughter of Professor Satish Dhawan. Kalur has at least we want to see her. See, this is one <laughs> because um, I, I, I might, uh, if I quote this, may be a very lengthy, but still I quote because how the names matters, you know. Uh, when I had been to IIT long ago for my PhD work, uh, PhD interview, that is uh, when I had a paper in my hand, that's Professor Amula Kumar read this paper. There, Padma Srinivasan was the chairperson of uh, uh, Appropriate Technology Department. And then Padma Srinivasan, somehow I was not eligible for the, to take the PhD interview. Padma Srinivasan came out and asked me, see Chanesh, you were unable to make you, etc., etc. Then I said, Madam, I have prepared well on the appropriate technologies and I just showed the appropriate papers written by Amule Kumar Reddy. Immediately, I know you Bangaloreans will look after all this, etc, etc, she said. And though I was not eligible, believe me, without attending the interview, I have taken the you know, travel fair from IIT Delhi at those days. Just because, referring to Amule Kumar Reddy. I was a small student then. And then, incidentally, just soon after 15 days, I somehow joined Amule Kumar team. That happened. I came back uh, after that and joined KSCST and things were different. You know, so this is what uh, what Professor uh, Satish uh, Dhawan's also. So I, ha I am very happy that uh, all my CPUS uh, supporters uh, could listen to Professor Jyotna for an hour long and saw her and also his legacy of his interest through us. And there is some light among us all the CPUS followers now. Um, Perhaps it, this will lead us in a different way. And uh, I'm so happy that CR Satya has joined, CS Arvind is with us, and many known figures which have uh, contributed to the science of uh, science in general as well to the institutions. And with that, we are happy that uh, CPS, the conceptually, what uh, Satish, Satish Devan had uh, dreamt at that time, that is, interacting science with society, uh, inter interfaces, and things like that, through Professor Ramanya Kumar and, and, and after. So, you know, in, in that way, uh, Professor uh, Josna's work has, uh, uh, though she talked exclusively about his father, I, 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 I make a request on behalf of my followers in CPS, he should come again once again to talk about her work. As a biologist, as so people, I have, I have requested, I mean, I got few requests from my followers, like, uh, he would like to know what stem cell is, how it is used, what is neurobiology? There are many issues of that kind. Perhaps uh, I request him. I'd be maybe... very happy to do that if you if you have time. I mean, at some point, I in fact I'm going to get uh, Professor Shashidara also. So maybe maybe he can talk about his work in developmental biology, and uh, I can talk about stem cells. I'd be happy to do it. Exactly. Thank you very it much. Be fun. So, yeah. So, that is the that is the kind of you know participation of our CPS for us. So thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, the entire worry of as a daughter and as a scientist, that's another thing. So our, uh, including me, I wish to know as a scientist, uh, after, 
I mean, doctor of a scientist, as a scientist again. So, uh, how things are, etc. You know, those experiences with your work, we would like to have it. And anyway, you accept it gladly, and I am very happy for this, madam. So, thank you. We'll, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I request all our uh, people who have participated now or whatever, otherwise, even they might see we are recording this and we will share this afterwards. Uh, we, a small request to all our followers that uh, we keep doing this uh, from last five, six months uh, as webinars. Earlier, we were reaching through articles. Every week, I have reached my readers. Uh, in uh, Vigil Swami's um, Centenary celebration. We wrote more than hundred plants about their culture, about their you know. Uh, so people know about it. So what do I request them is you kindly help us in doing this in a much better way with your intellectual support as well. I take this superior trust. So uh, it is a public into. You should grow as a public institute, and which is not initiative of just three or just four or whatever. Uh, I hope uh, our participants uh, will help us in in any direction, uh, in, in any sense, like intellectually or physically or whatever. Otherwise, so I am very happy. The, I mean, I, I have seen one Bhuvaneshwari has completely agree with Chennai, etc. She is my student student, and she is sitting in Assam and hearing us. So I am very happy that way. She is also a scientist, biologist. So it's a good way that uh, our efforts are really taken into some interest. So I am very happy. Professor Dosna Madam was with us and uh, made really a different con different kind of uh, life to KCPS as well to the realities of the day. So thank you very much, Madam, and having with us and spend time on our and also your entire uh, interest in making science as a public intercourse. Thank you very much, madam. So I would like to thank all other participants uh, who have attended today and made their interesting contributions in time as well, their uh, whatever questions or whatever uh, opinions, etc. So I would like to thank everyone and I just say thank you very much again. Namaskar. Thank you very much for this program and uh, i'll be in touch with you we can uh, set up the further programs yeah, yeah. at a later date thank you thank you very much thank you very much yeah thank you dr chanesh uh, dr vinkesh and akash i'll be in touch